This is Katya with Hindustan Astrology. Hold on. Hello. No, don't close your eyes. God damn it. Hello, this is Katya with Hindustan Astrology, and today's video is for the August 2019 full moon. Now, just so you know, this is not a Western astrology video. I use the sidereal zodiac, which is the real-time placement of the stars. Most Western astrologers use the tropical zodiac, which is not the real-time placement of the stars. Western astrology uses 10% of the methods of real astrology which is Vedic astrology. Now, if you've done Western astrology or you've done it for a long time, I have done Western astrology since my mother started teaching me when I was nine years old. I did it for about 30, 35 years and realized that it wasn't working anymore. I started studying Vedic sidereal and all of a sudden, all of the transit predictions I was making were coming true. So, all I can say to you is that if you are suspicious or doubtful of Vedic, but you do Western, I would just say that please, please study the Vedic system the way you did Western and then compare them and come to me. Unfortunately, what's happening right now in Western astrology is that because Western is the predominant uh, system that's used throughout the world, people in that system are learning a little bit of Vedic, for instance, the nakshatras, and then applying it to Western and saying, oh, well, I've studied Vedic, so I know that, you know, I would rather use Western. No, I'm sorry, most people have not. Most people have studied a little bit of Vedic, and they don't really understand the difference between the two systems. So please, before you uh, send me any comments or emails about um, this not being Western astrology, just know that there's a very good reason I use Vedic Sidereal. So I will leave it at that. Now this video is about the August 2019 green full moon, green corn full moon. Why is it called the green corn full moon? Well, in Celtic traditions, uh, August 2nd is the day called Lamas or Lunasad. Now Lu is the Celtic triple fire god of smithcraft, music, and poetry. And because he rules music, he's very similar to the Greek god Apollo. Now uh, this is taking place at 8.29 a.m. EST and it's at 28 degrees of Capricorn and this is in the nakshatra called Danishta. Danishta means the richest one and indeed people with this nakshatra strong oftentimes come into money later in life and as Mars rules this nakshatra oftentimes it can have something to do with real estate or cars but oftentimes real estate. Um, now, the um, star that rules this is called Sadalsud, and this is called the Star of Symphony. People with this nakshatra strong oftentimes are musicians, or very drawn to music, or could be involved with dancing. For instance, my mother has this placement, and she was a jazz singer. Now, as Capricorn is the Rashi sign of this nakshatra, Saturn is the ruler. And Saturn gives melancholy and a sadness to this nakshatra. And that's because the symbol is the reed flute or the drum. And in order for those instruments to make music, they have to be hollow. So there is a hollow void inside people that are, uh, have this nakshatra and they're always trying to fill it up. Uh, music is a great way to do that, but oftentimes they, you know, they can, um, get into other things that aren't so healthy, such as alcohol or drugs. Now, there is a famous Sufi poem by Rumi that speaks of uh, the reed flute. 
I'm going to read this to you because I feel like this is identifies this perfectly with this nakshatra. The Reed Flute Song by Rumi. Listen to the story told by the reed of being separated. Since I was cut from the reed bed, I have made this crying sound. Anyone apart from someone he loves understands what I say. Anyone pulled from a source longs to go back. So there is a longing to fill the void here. And, uh, you know, this, I feel like at this point we really need to talk about what mental illness is. Um, again, it always goes back to epistemology. What lens are you looking through to call someone mentally ill? Most people, you know, especially in the United States, are coming from a Western European philosophical background. And uh, it's very different from how Native Americans view mental illness. So let's, let's talk about that for a second. Um, in Vedic astrology, we would say uh, moon. An afflicted moon, uh, for instance, with Rahu or even with Neptune, um, or having some conjun conjunction or Parivartana Yoga with Mercury can show mental illness. But this is coming from a white race background viewpoint. In Native American culture, their culture talks to trees, they talk to the grass, the animals, uh, you know, anything in nature ha that has consciousness, natives will have seemingly a conversation with. When white people came here, they saw that and they thought they were crazy. And so anybody who spoke their own native language or practiced their own religion were put into mental institutions and this happened all the way up until 1978 when Jimmy Carter passed the Freedom of Religion Act. Now, you would think because this country was founded on, you know, founded by Puritans who came here to get away from religious persecution, that they wouldn't turn around and do it to somebody else. But we know history has always shown us that people that have been persecuted will turn around and persecute somebody else. For instance, the way Israel is persecuting Palestinians. So we have to be very careful when we talk about mental illness, especially if you're dealing with people from different cultural backgrounds. Our white people interpretation of mental illness is not going to fly with natives who see the world in a very different view. What lens are you looking through? So before you diagnose somebody with a mental illness, make sure that they aren't in fact psychic or maybe, you know, they're sensitives, very sensitive uh, emotionally. Not everybody that's sensitive is psychic. Maybe they're telepathic. Maybe they're very gifted with multidimensionality and they have several, you know, thoughts going on at the same time. Racing brain syndrome um, is a symptom of ADHD. And guess what? ADHD is a symptom of, uh, of its foggy brain, you know. And that's oftentimes comes from having food allergies. So we have to be very careful when we talk about mental illness and persecuting people with mental illness. Now, speaking of Mars being the ruler of this nakshatra, uh, we've noticed a lot of, um, well, transit Mars right now is causing a lot of problems. We'll get to the aspects and, and the transits in a minute, but I want you to, you know, keep that in your mind um, that people with true mental illness oftentimes will inflict pain and hurt onto others. Um, just because you maybe, you know, uh, are slightly autistic or something, it doesn't mean that you're a violent person. And I think this is, when we start having real discussions in this country about mental illness, then some of this violence will start to subside. 
Now, um, I do want to take a look at the chart. I'm going to pull this up. Because we have several planets uh, that are getting ready to go into Leo. But on this day, we have... Um, only Mars is in Leo at this point. And as Mars rules this nakshatra, this is, this is a very important transit planet to pay attention to. Uh, now, he's just gotten out of the Gandanta zone, uh, like the day before he went out of Gandanta, because on this day, he's at 4 degrees of Leo, and at 3.4 degrees, he goes out of his drowning zone. So basically, when Mars started Gandanta, which was uh, at 26.4 degrees of Cancer, that was the day of the Walmart shooting, that was, you know, 13 hours later was the Ohio shooting. That was Mars entering the Gandanta zone. So if, if you have any questions about the sidereal zodiac not being accurate, I'm sorry, this is very accurate. As soon as it hit that Gandanta zone, boom, the violence started. Okay? On this day of the full moon, we still have Mercury, the Sun, and Venus lagging behind in Cancer. And, um, yeah, the Sun and Venus are Gandanta on this full moon, and the Sun is Sankrati, or on the cusp of going into Leo. And as uh, Leo is ruled by the Sun, this puts a lot of emphasis on the Sun also during this full moon. Now, all of these planets in Cancer are 12 places away from Mars, and that shows enemies from behind. We have to be real careful um, you know, watch our back at this time, for sure. Especially if you have something in Cancer or Leo in your chart that's personal. You know, be careful of who's behind you. Now, it's mostly the good guys, really. I mean, Mercury's a good guy. Sun, I have a hard time seeing the Sun as being uh, malefic because he is the ruler of our solar system. He gives us life. How can that be malefic? But it, if it's too much Sun, he can burn it out. Venus is a uh, benefic. So, I mean, it's not the worst planets that are 12 places away, but still, they're 12 places away, okay? Uh, should could also show things for foreign lands um, coming up. Now, Uranus is doing the, um, is four places away from the sun, five places away from Mars. Um, but as the moon is, um, I'm sorry, Uranus is four places away from uh, the moon. Uh, that shows that we could have problems in the homeland, especially for the U.S. chart, because they have Gemini rising. Uh, now the moon is, you know, the moon is pretty isolated over here. Um, He's got Neptune retrograde on one side, and he's got Pluto retrograde, K2, and Saturn retrograde on the other. And he's not real happy over there. And that's another reason also for the melancholy felt on this day. And I feel like this is still, you know, we're all still reeling and, and getting over these, these recent mass shootings, and we're all feeling sad, and we're all questioning mental illness at this time. And Neptune is two places away from the moon. That's going to show deceptions, and it's retrograde, too. Now, Neptune is opposite, not to the degree, but Mars is at 4 degrees. Neptune is at 23, 24 degrees that day. Um, but they are in an opposition, and Neptune is the great dissolver. Where he shows up, uh, you know, he, he can represent represent lies and deception, but he can also reveal the lies and the deception. And being retrograde, I feel like we're going to, you know, we're going back and we're looking back going, oh, aha, now I see where that, where I was fooled. And having Mars opposite, I mean, this is where we're going to see what went wrong, I think, with a lot, what happened with a lot of the violence and how we can stop it in the future as well. Now, something I was thinking about, and I don't know, I haven't um, looked too much into this, but you know what else is hollow and makes a sound, and that's a gun. Um, now, a gun is not a symbol of this nakshatra, but it has a similar quality of being hollow, and, and it fills a void with a bullet, and so we have to be real careful at this time. 
uh, especially not to project our our mouth out because Neptune's two places away from the moon so be careful not to say things that hurt people um, and make sure that you know you are speaking your truth don't don't hold it in and hold it in and not place your boundaries properly and then finally when you had it with somebody you snap at them we have to be real careful of that now guess what Jupiter is direct yay Jupiter went direct on the 11th uh, and that's probably the only real good <laughs> thing to this to this uh, full moon but you know now that he's direct he's showing us that we have to cling to the fire of hope and inspiration we have to cling to the fire of hope and inspiration to lead us out of the dark night so that we do not succumb to the dark forces that are all around us um, the eclipse points Rahu and K2 are doing a 5-9 no, I'm sorry, they're doing a 6-8 aspect to this. Excuse me. And that's difficult. It's very difficult. Um, things that were revealed possibly on the eclipses uh, last month, we're thinking about, we're going over in our mind. But also, you know, we've got this major eclipse in, um, in Sagittarius coming up at uh, the end of the year, December 26th. Seven planets in Sagittarius. Um... So that is 12 places away from the moon. And as I said, the, uh, the planets that are in Cancer are 12 places away from Mars and the sun. And the sun is there. Um, but having the eclipse points, especially K2, 12 places away from the moon, I really hope there's no more terrorism at this time. Um, so yeah, it's, and plus, you know, at the end of the month, we have five planets going into Leo, and this is just the beginning of it at this, um, over the next two weeks, we're going to have Mercury, Sun, and Venus all go into Leo, so that the new moon at the end of the month is going to be pretty heavy with especially, um, finding out lies um, deceptions are going to come out, especially um, things from the government as well. And of course, you know, we've got this whole buildup of energy around uh, Area 51. And uh, having Rahu and Gemini already indicates that we are uh, thinking about ET, thinking about technology, things are going to be moving in those areas. And so we've known this whole this whole time that uh, this the discussion of aliens and UFOs especially hidden secrets within the government that they're not telling us uh, we're gonna come up at this time but nobody thought the area 51 um, stampede was going to transpire I mean who would think right so um, this is gonna build up and I think it's next month when they were talking about storming area 51 so uh, yeah, it's pretty intense, and um, if you um, have planets in Danisha in Capricorn, you're going to really feel it at this time. If you have planets in Leo, you're really going to feel it at this time, uh, and Cancer. So, um, of course, this is a general reading, and I can't, I really don't like doing the 12 sign um going through each 12 signs for the transits because it's very general and I want um, you to realize that there's a lot more uh, going on than just you know where the Sun is happening um, where the moon is at you know they're in opposition um, during the full moon those points are just the only important points so I hope this helps and if you're interested in booking a reading with me I just want you to know that um, lately I've been doing a lot of video readings. People seem to really like this. Of course, I prefer having a one-on-one -on -one where we can talk in real time um, because we can get to the bond with things much quicker. But if you're in a different time zone, if it's you know you have kids, it's difficult for you 
to meet with me during the times that I can meet, then I do what's called a video capture re reading. And I'll pull up your chart on my phone, and I have my headset on, and I just start talking with your chart. And um, then I send you the link to the video. And that's half the price. Uh, it's half the time, but it's half the price. So uh, if you have any questions, just send me an email, info at hindustanastrology.com. And of course, going to my website, hindustanastrology.com, uh, click on the consultations tab at the top, and uh, that's where you book the reading. And then in my blogs, um, this will be in the uh, August prediction report, and then also I'll put the video up there too as well. Hope you guys are having a great summer and are doing well. Thank you very much. Namaste. Spider medicine is very sacred. So as you're going through this green corn moon, focus on what you're creating. What are you bringing into this world through the rays of the sun? Is this something positive? Or is it something that is manipulated through your ego? Because oftentimes what we feel is positive for us is actually something that is a negative energy. And so we have to be very careful during this full moon to only bring in the rays of creation. Namaste.